How's your offseason been? It's been good. Uh, too short, but solid. <clears throat> your new quarterbacks out there. It's been good. Um, it's been good. Shout out to BA, another BA, um, and Sam. They've done a good job so far coming in. Um, and then, of course, Trey's doing a great job as well. So um, we got some movement at the quarterback position and then just waiting for our last guy to get back. Okay, Go ahead, we talked Jack. about his finger getting better. Do you feel a difference in the way the ball's coming out towards you guys? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say so. I haven't noticed any difference, which uh, – like people been asking me, but I'm just like I forgot he was hurt for a second. I didn't even think about his finger. So um, I think his ball's been coming out the out the same. It's coming out uh, catchable, very catchable. So yeah. When you get out of a day like today, Brandon, where you you caught all four targets, I think that came your way a couple forty yard shots. Uh, I mean yesterday defense had a great day. Yesterday you guys weren't out there, but defense with red zone after a, a long weekend, so they got after us. So we just. It was a, yeah, we had to get him today. But it was a fun day today. Uh, we got to throw the ball around, uh, play football, move around, get back to used to hearing the calls, um, get back to lining up, get back to just playing football. So it was fun today. Talk to Isaiah Oliver before you, you got here. Does he jump out to you um, on the field uh, in film review, anything like that? Yeah, I knew him before. I saw him. I didn't know him before, but I've seen him before um, making plays. Um, we saw him last year. Um, but he's out there making plays as well now. Um, we saw him. We, he's popped up a couple times on film, so he's doing a great job as well. Does um, your your first pick, uh, Jair Brown? Does does he? You do you watch him? Does he kind of uh, uh, jump out to you at all? Yeah, that's my locker mate. That's my locker mate. So I've been talking to him. I've been watching him, looking out for him. Um, we got him today, and I've been telling him he's gonna get him today, but or one of these days. But he's been he's done a great job. He's had he's got like I don't know three or four picks already through. Um, these first couple of days, um, and he just comes in, um, want to work, willing to work, comes in, doesn't say too much, just work. Uh, so I like him. I like him a lot. A lot of rumor, speculation about you that this offseason, you've had a little fun with it on, on Twitter around the draft. Uh, how do you kind of process that? What, what, is, what is your reaction to, to some of that? I don't know. Um, it's just a crazy, crazy business. Um, so you never really know. Um, but I was having fun with it. I, I, already, I knew what was going on um, long before. Um, so yeah, I kind of I didn't know what was going on at first, but I, just, I had a conversation um, with John. I had a conversation with Kyle. They told me what it was, and then from that point on, we moved forward. So yeah. Brandon, when you say uh, Jay or Brown has three or four interceptions in practices, like what kind of interceptions have they been? Have they been lucky? Have they been <laughs> film study? Have they been uh, tips and overthrows? Got to get them. Uh, he got a couple. He had a couple tip tip balls. Um, I only, I'm not sure. Uh, I was in. I was in one of the play. I was in a few plays actually where he had a pick. So I'm not. I don't remember what exactly it looked like. But a pick. We'll t a pick is a pick. So we want that regardless. Um, I know a lot of people who leave picks out there. So and he actually left one out there. So he might have had even had five. So, uh, but he's getting to the. He's getting to the ball as a safety. So you love to see it. Deep down the left sideline. What did you see on that play? I ran the wrong route. I ran the wrong route. But. I don't even know who threw it. I'm not sure who threw it. I'm not sure. Trey threw it? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, see, so just throw it up. Uh, did you watch Brock throw yesterday, or did you catch with him? I guess he started his throwing program. Um, I saw him I saw him moving around, throwing it a little bit. Um, I haven't caught with them. Uh, but, yeah, I'll talk to him. He, he's saying he's, he's, he's doing he's doing the same old Brock. He's doing good. So we'll see uh, when he gets out there. I'm not sure. Um, but, yeah, excited to see him. to see him at this point. On track, on absolutely. So much was made of your evolution of your career the first three years. What's what's now new as you're this much more experience coming into this season? I'm about to take off. That's it. Uh, uh, feeling because of the way last year ended that you're just st still on an upward path, upward trajectory. Um, just understanding, just a little thing. We all know it's football. Um, and nothing's ever guaranteed, but. Um, just getting a under, better understanding for um, my life as a as a person, and then as a football player, kind of putting those things together, um, and then um, just looking to get better. So I feel like uh, now having another off season on top, um, being able to build on top, um, coming out here again for another um, spring OTA, spring ball, whatever you want to call it, being able to work with those guys, being able to work on my craft, being able to get better, um, and just continue to look to get better. That's really it. So um, I see it 
and yeah. You tweeted this offseason that you're the fourth option on a run first team. Do you feel overlooked, underrated? For sure. For sure, yeah. I, I feel, yeah, I, I mean, that's been my whole life. That's just how it's been. Um, but I feel like it's supposed to be that way. Um, that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me motivated, keeps me angry, to, to say out of sense. So <clears throat> even times when I'm not, uh, I told I told. I told him all the time, like, I, I get myself mad at him just because um, I need a little extra motivation. So, yeah. Brandon, have you gone against Luter yet? What do you, what do you think of the, the rookie corner? Luter, 28, 28, 28. 28. Um, not too much. I don't think. Not too much. Um, yeah, not too much. Uh, yeah, sorry. For, for the downtime here, will you go down to Southern California again with Trey or anything like that? We're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out. We want to do something again. Um, we had a little two-week period at the end of last um, off-season where everybody got together and got to throw for a little bit. So this time we want to kind of just bring more people in together. So we'll figure out what we're going to do. Um, but we might change it to a different spot. See what George is doing now in Nashville. See who knows. We'll see. Not having Brock here right now affects the way you guys do things this time of year. I mean, it's the off-season. It's not. You don't have to be here. So. Uh, he's working on what he's working on to get better and to meet us and um, for our ultimate goal at the end of the season. So um, everybody knows that he's working to do that. So there's no, there's no issue at all. You said you you're, feel like you're ready to take off. Why don't you consider a thousand yard season already taking off? Uh, that was the start to it. Um, but just looking to build, keep building. Go ahead, Jen. Last one, last one. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, Danny Gray had kind of a tough season last year. What have you seen from him coming back, OCAs? What do you expect from him this season? Uh, he came in. Uh, you can tell he's been working on his body. He's been doing the right things while we've been gone. Um, and just figuring the same thing for him, figuring out what he has to do, how he's supposed to do it, and continue to do that every single day. Um, and so far through through the spring, I think he's done that. So he's done a lot better. So just continue to, if he builds off that um, into this End of this um, OTAs and into our 40 days away and then into training camp, I think he'll be in a good spot uh, to help this team when it's time to play football. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. That's it for today, guys. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, obviously it's just been one of the best defenses in the NFL for the last however many years. So just having that opportunity, I feel like, you know, a lot of guys would kind of kind of take that opportunity if they have the chance to come here, um, defensive players, that is. Um, and just being around a, a lot of great players, a lot of great coaches, um, I feel like it just elevate my game that much more. So, I mean, I was excited for sure. Just your your skill set. Well, mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're a bigger guy than probably a lot of nickelbacks. Right. What, what about uh, that position suits you so well? Yeah, um, it's really, I mean, for me, like the nickel position, you, you're asked to do a lot of things, right? Whether that's covering, being in the run game. Um, and so that's kind of what I've learned um, over the last few years. And then, like you said, just being bigger, being able to take on blocks, being able to fit um, inside and to be gaps and stuff like that and make those kind of tackles, um, I feel like helps my game as a nickel um, a lot, for sure. Steve Wilkes told us that he knew you from playing you in the division. Yeah. How much did you know about him? Um, a little bit here and there. Um, obviously, I knew of him just as a coach, but I never really had like conversations with him before. Um, but I knew of his, his resume for sure um, and just kind of the success he's had, especially with defensive backs. Um, and so obviously having him here was also a big, big part of my decision just because I know that he can, he can help me in, in a lot of different ways. Is that an advantage for you to have a defensive coordinator who's working specifically with, with those defensive backs? Yeah, I think so. Um, I just think he has a lot of knowledge. Um, whether he was, I mean, our primary defensive backs coach or just like all around D.C., I just think that his knowledge of the game, his knowledge at the position, um, it is helpful for us for sure. Um, he can understand it. He's coached a lot of great DBs, been, a long, been around a long time. So, I mean, we just try to just soak up everything we can from him um, and just learn. He has a long history of uh, right. using the, uh, blitzes a lot, yeah. Yeah, especially with defensive backs. Uh, he might do it more than other people. Is that, is that part of your game, something that fits in? How, how do you view that? Yeah, no, it's fun. Um, that's I kind of like I, when people ask me like if I like playing nickel or outside corner more. That's kind of like one of the things I lean to is just being able to blitz more. I feel like it just adds so much more to the game. Um, and you just around the ball so much more. So you no, know, I like blitzing a lot. And then obviously he has a lot of different schemes, a lot of different things he can draw up um, for all of us. But yeah, for that nickel position, yeah, we're excited about that. Yeah. What's your early read on defending Sam Darnold and Trey Lance passes? Um, I mean, they're both really good quarterbacks. Obviously, um, I've played against Sam a few times. Um, I haven't played against Trey before, so just kind of seeing him 
Um, but yeah, no, they're both, I mean, they're both just real athletic guys. I feel like people, a lot of people don't respect that enough. Um, but they can both throw really good balls, both throwing really good deep balls already um, this camp. So, um, I mean, obviously they're battling out, having doing their thing. But no, so far, I mean, I think they're, they're both really, really good quarterbacks. What is the key to blitzing from the nickel spot? Is it uh, um, timing? I mean, it's a lot of different things. I think timing is the biggest thing. Um, a lot of times when you have a nickel blitz, the only time, the only reason why he's not getting there is because he's just coming too late. Um, he's just too far away from the quarterback. The quarterback gets out too quick or the runs the other way or whatever. Um, so I think that's kind of the biggest thing, being able to time it up, being really just at the line of scrimmage by the time the ball snapped. Because um, other than that, a lot of times we're unaccounted for um, on, on a lot of different blitzes that we can draw up. So if we're able to time it up and get there, then we can we can definitely get home. How do you do that without tipping off? Exactly. That's, that's basically the game to play. Um, just reading the mannerisms from the quarterback. A lot of quarterbacks have different tells of, of when the snap's coming, um, especially here when when the crowd gets loud. Obviously, they're gonna have to do something to to determine the snap. You can't just go silent the whole time um, without like a leg kick or something like that. So there'd be little things that we can look into game plan wise. But yeah, just being able to time it up like that. How is it? the adversity you faced in the NFL helped you? Um, yeah, a lot of different ways. Um, I mean, I feel like everyone kind of goes through something um, during the time in the league. Uh, I think it's rare to kind of just breeze through it. I don't think that's really possible. Um, but for me, like, especially coming out the injury and things like that, I mean, it's kind of just, for me, it was like restarting um, almost. Like, you got to reprove yourself. You got to redo it just because you, no one can know what kind of player you're going to be after that type of injury or really type any, almost any type of injury, um, but especially lower half. Um, and so that was kind of just my mindset was just like starting over um, and just trying to prove what type of player I am, what type of player I can be. Um, that was kind of the mindset that I had going into it. What point did you kind of tell yourself, all right, I'm back? Yeah, um, it was a while, I think, really. I, it probably wasn't until that towards the end of last year. Um, I don't know what game specifically, but maybe like 10, 11, 12, those types of weeks um, is when it really felt normal, normal, if that makes sense. Um, I felt like early on I was able to do all the things, but it just took a lot more to do them. Um, and now it's more natural. A lot of people believe that after an injury like that, that whole first year is kind of getting back. So this year, right. are you like, now now you can really make some strides? Yeah, for sure. And I think the biggest thing with that is just being able to have the off season to work at it. So like my last off season, we could look back at this time last year, I wasn't playing football. You know what I mean? I was just rehabbing, just working on the knee. And now, you know, you're out there on the field, you're out there competing with the guys, so you'd be able to become that much better of a player. Um, and so I think that's probably the biggest part of why why people say that that second year after the injury is really when, you know, you're, you get back into it. With uh, Atlanta last year, you guys kind of took it to the 49ers physically, and then they kind of went on a run after right. that. But at the time that you played them, did, what kind of respect did you have for them then? And what did you, as you saw right. that the season went along, what were you thinking? Yeah, no, that, I mean, that was really the emphasis of the week. Um, everyone knows that when the 49ers are coming in or you're going in to play the 49ers, it's going to be a physical game. Like, that's just the tone that's already set um, before the game even starts. That was the mindset the whole week. We knew if we were, if the Falcons were going to win that game, that we was going to have to be more physical than them. Um, and that's kind of just the respect that I feel like the 49ers, um, it comes with that, with that um, logo on, on the helmet, really, just because of the way they, that we play football. So... I think that's big, um, and obviously, I mean, if we look back at that Falcons game, like, yeah, we played well and we won, but the next week we were banged up bad, um, and then we went out there and, and lost a big one um, the week after that. And so that's kind of just how it goes um, playing against the 49ers is, I mean, you know what it's going to be for four quarters, and then it's can you do that for four quarters, and then can you come back and do it the next week, which is pretty hard to do, I feel like. The stat that every single team that played the 49ers last year lost. The no, I haven't seen that, but that makes sense. Yeah, just because, of, I mean, that's just the brand of football. Um, and it's hard to be able to do that for 17 straight weeks um, playing that way, for sure. Not just a coincidence. I don't think so, no. <laughs> There's a lot of young defensive backs in yeah. the room. Do you feel as a veteran that you uh, maybe to assert a little bit more leadership this year? Yeah, definitely. Um, I definitely I definitely think so. Um, I'm kind of right now just getting acclimated, getting to know the guys, just more on a personal level. But um, yeah, I feel like we have we have really good leadership in the room um, with Gip, even Huff, even though being a younger guy, he's, he's a he's a vocal leader. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm trying to help those guys in any way I can, um, the young ones especially, and just make sure that we're all on the same page and we're all just playing our best football. All right, thanks, yep, no problem. Thank you. I'm all right, man. I'm all right. Hey, <laughs> Bolts. Spoke to us, and he has big expectations for you this year. You've been here the complete off season. What does it feel like to have that defensive corner support? Uh, it feels good. I'm not gonna lie. You know, just having somebody, you know, behind you, you know, while you're doing what you're doing. You know, I've been working uh, day in day out, so just to have somebody be able to see it, and you know, that's I, I feel like that's pretty cool. What are your expectations for yourself. Just go out and play, you know, and just make something happen. You know, help the team as much as I can. And, you know, that's just coming in each and every day with a focused mindset and, you know, just doing what our coaches tell us to do, stacking the day, and whatever happens, happens. What are the changes that you made this offseason? Uh, really just, you know, focusing in on my body, you know, um, just lifting, trying to get big, and uh, focusing on my mental as well because I know last year everything's kind of like a – a blur for me so you know just really settling down and being you know key to all my details and things of that sort so yeah about 13 pounds more now or so. oh yeah you know i've just been working you know and i'm still going so i i wouldn't even say probably 13. just the length the length of the season last year coming from college to having how long the nfl season was how much of an adjustment was that for you and in terms of did maybe wear you down a little bit by the end uh Towards the end of the season, I would say my body wasn't the same as it was starting the season. And I know that, of course, it's going to wear down. But um, I feel like I didn't have enough. So, you know, I just come out and keep working and try to have what I need for the rest of the season. The offseason, Samson leaves, Charles leaves. It would seem like there's a big opportunity there for you to, to win this. Is that something you think about? Is that is that a goal for you to step into that role? Uh, really, not not really. You know, my biggest goal is to, you know, help my team in, in, in any way I can, you know, to, to win. So if that if that's the case and they want to put me there, then that's what I'm going to just have to do. But regardless, I'm just trying to, you know, stack a day and uh, win in any type of way we can. At the end of the season, both John and Kyle said that you lost strength <laughs> through the course of the season. Is that something that, I mean, you you could feel that you didn't need them to tell you? How did that those conversations happen, and how did you feel about just where you were at the end of the season? Well, you know, I feel like you just got to take that and run with it. You know, you, if you take it the bad the bad way or a wrong way, you know, it could affect you. So I just I, I took that to, and I ran with it, and I just you know made sure. I hit those areas in the off season where I was failing or not doing uh, the best job at the end of the season. So really it's just, you know, taking it and putting that and implementing it in my game now to where, you know, I could just be that man that they seen, that they grabbed. Feel different? Oh man, I feel so much different. I feel, uh, I feel a lot strong, just a lot stronger in general, and I, I just feel like I can move a little bit different now. You know, my opening was it to to spend that whole first year and have kind of lose your strength <clears throat> a little bit, and then look at Nick Bosa every day. I mean, and, and that kind of example was that for you going into this off season? Uh, it, it's an eye opener for sure. You know, seeing a guy who can consistently just be Bosa every day. You know. Um, it's definitely an eye opener. It makes you want to, you know, get your stuff together because you see him, you know, together all day. So it's like you just want to be right there with him, you know, helping. Your bend has obviously always been elite. What what has it taken to maintain your bend and that athleticism, even while putting on a lot of bulk this off season? Definitely been in that training room a lot, man. Uh, I've been taking a lot of time. It was one thing that I, I would say I changed from my rookie year to now is just being in here all day. You know, um, I'm starting to fall in love with just, you know, being in here on countless hours, you know, just in the tubs, in the training room, in the Goshki room, um, in the breathing room, you know, just trying to better myself. And I, I don't think I was doing that last year. Kind of just, I just want to get out or not want to get out, but I just kind of left after, you know, not really focusing on my body, I would say. So this year, um, definitely say I'm, you know, just really honing in and, you know, taking the time to focus on myself and my body and what I need 
to go out there and keep doing it all over and over again. Have you been able to test out your strength, or is that something that you know you can only really do when Trent Williams is here, or you have your, your full pads on, that sort of thing? Well, <clears throat> definitely in the weight room. Um, I've been hitting numbers I've never hit before, or at least I never tried before, and I'm hitting them in there. So I, I could definitely see myself getting stronger. So, but that would probably be the way. Uh, I, I wouldn't say I have, like, tested it out or anything yet. But A couple examples. What, what kind of numbers are you, are you hitting? Uh, well, for... Well, for squat, um, <laughs> uh, I just hit four or four fifteen not too long ago, and then literally like two days ago, I just hit three fifteen for bench. Now I'm in the three plate club. You know that's a big thing. Uh, well, for me, because my dad used to always make you know fun of me because he could do three plates and I couldn't. I only was two plates, so now I'm in the three plate club. So I'm happy about that and the four plate club for squat. What is what's your ideal weight? Uh, if you could pick it, and it doesn't seem like you've lost any speed. If anything, you've seen faster. I would say um, 260. Uh, 260 right where I am, 260 to 265 probably be my best weights. And, uh, you know, I, I say I've been playing around with that, but, you know, honestly, me getting stronger and, like, just getting my body together, it's, the weight doesn't even matter anymore. It's just kind of just, you know, on – me just getting right, you know, getting bigger and stuff. So I would say probably 260, 265. Chris Kacerik influenced your offseason? Big time. Big. Well, i tell you, so uh, after the season, when we had went on the little break or whatever, he told me to tell him when I was going to be back. And, you know, I told him the date or whatever. But since the day I got back, he was with me every single day in the weight room, you know, uh, telling me, like, are you going to stack a day or are you just going to let this day stack on you? You know, um, I like challenges, and I, I think he knows that. So, you know, he just challenges me every day to come stack a day, and I've been doing it. So, you know, I've just been – he's been, you know, with me kind of along the way, I would say. Rick, you mentioned the end of the year kind of being a blur for you a little bit. What, what was your feeling like, you know, having some inactives there piling up toward the end of the year? Were you frustrated, humbled? What, what, what kind of – what was going through? Um, I'm really, I really like to just, you know, not go through the motions, but I say, you know, understand why things are happening to me when they're happening. So, you know, I feel like everything happens for a reason. So when they sat me, you know, I kind of had to, you know, kind of take myself from the game and see, you know, what what else is going on that I need to be doing. Uh, so I, like I'm doing now. So basically, I say it kind of helped me uh, in a way. Because, you know, instead of me, you know, being mad or sad from being, you know, taken out of the game, I figured out things that I needed to do to help myself, to better myself further on. Yeah. You, you stayed here the whole time. Mm -hmm. were, you, were you rehabbing something or were you able to work with the strength and conditioning staff? Uh, I'm just, I would call it uh, rehab, you know, just staying on top, staying on top of my body, you know, just being in there, um, just doing whatever, you know, if I can... If I start running and, you know, I feel any type of little soreness, nick, I can just go in there and, you know, get it taken care of. Thanks, Jake. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate you guys.